Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video of all of my project planning and goal setting and how I track things and my Kanban board and all that good stuff. So I did have some interest in that from my last video as I was talking about my project section. So if you haven't seen my last video, I would suggest you go watch that. It has an overview of my planner and then it does talk a little bit about my overview of my project planning and goal setting process. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start by going to my goal section in my planner. And the first thing that I do at the beginning of the year is I, or actually at, towards the end of the year in the fall, I go through with my husband and I fill out a sheet of all of our things that we want to accomplish during the next year. And it starts out, let me show you. It starts out like this. Um, it's a project, what is this? A goal tracker printable from Strange and Charmed and I will link her shop below. So I take that and I obviously make it a little bit smaller so it'll fit in my planner. And we go through and we go and list out the different things we want to accomplish the next year. So we have home improvement area, travel, any personal things that we wanna accomplish, organizing projects, craft things that I wanna do, any kind of um, trips, mostly for my husband because he's really into motorcycles, that kind of thing. And then what we do, and this is not, doesn't mean we're gonna do all of these things, this is just kind of like our ideal of what we would like to do in the coming year. So then we take that and we figure out how can we fit all of this into the year and we break it down into quarters. So we start with um, Q1, what needs to happen in Q1. Like for example, here I had under travel that I wanted to go to Allie Edwards Story Camp and that was happening in January. So I knew it needed to go into quarter one. We were planning a trip to Las Vegas, that was gonna be in January, so that was Q1. Um, like kitchen remodel, we knew we wanted to start on that in the spring, so we put it into Q2, things like that. And we knew that we weren't gonna have time to work really on other projects or do travel while this was going on because that was gonna be a pretty big project, so we didn't add anything else into that quarter. So that's how we start out. We basically just kind of take from the year overview and then break it down into quarters, and then from there we figure out what month it will most likely happen in and schedule it out that way. So that's our overall yearly planning process. And then from there, I go into this I fill this out also at the beginning of the year, and this starts out from this from Peanuts Planner Co. And I will link that below as well. So it's just a letter-sized paper. I think she also does A4. And I take that and I actually add my own dates here because hers are in a different order. This, you know, hers go January, February, March, April, where I like to see. I like to see the entire quarter in a row. So I put the dates on here and then I list out things that we wanted to do in January, things we wanna do in February, March from this paper. All right, so I had like AE Story Camp, Las Vegas. So there you go, Las Vegas, AE Story Camp. I wanted to get LASIK in January. Um, I think I had that down here, but I didn't have it scheduled out at this point. Oh, I had it in February over here. So, um, but I ended up getting it scheduled into January. So I put it here and I also put in any holidays, any like important due dates, like we have taxes due April. I put in doctor appointments or dentist appointments. Like I know every February I have to go to the cardiologist. I know every February and August I go to the dentist. So I put those things in here. So I have an overall view of what I need to get done in the quarter and then I fill in additional projects that I'm working on. So I have a lot of crafty projects like One Little Word and Project Life and I try to schedule them out. I also have planner projects in here like I have my Q1 goal planning, Q2 goal planning um, in March. And so I put all of that stuff in here and then like the kitchen remodel, we had that here 
in Q2 in um, March, starting in March. So that's why I have it here. But we didn't know exactly when that was gonna happen. So I put it in as a sticky so that I could move it if, if plans changed. Um, so here's another project that I wanted to do, but I didn't have it particularly scheduled out. And of course that didn't happen. This year went kind of crazy. So July, I wanted to do a travel album and I actually did that in July. Uh, we were gonna go to Hawaii in September. Obviously that did not happen. So just things like that, that helps me to plan out the year and each quarter and each month within the year. So then after this, I take that and actually let me keep this out. So if we look at October, um, I take my monthly calendar, let me grab October, and I will list out things I need to do. So I lift, list out all of my projects here that need to occur in that month, and I pull that from here. So I take this list and I write it out here, and so I make sure that I'm getting it done that month. That's how that goes. So that's pretty much how I use it in my planner. Um, the next step that I do is I go through and put it into my quarterly plan and break it down more. So let me pull this over. This is a goals planner from, this is the HB90 method, and this is from Heart Breathings, and this is on Etsy, so I can also link that below. So I have, let's go to Q4, because I just finished planning out Q4. So this is a really, really nice planner. You can get it in A5 size as well, and this is letter. I wanted it nice and big so I could write lots. Um, so let me go here. So from there, when I'm doing my quarterly planning, I go through and I list out my goals and actually I should start with the goals page. So I have three goals that I create every quarter. Goal one is usually a physical self-care. Goal two is usually mental self-care. And then goal three is all of my hobbies and projects that I wanna do. So from that other list, they all fall in under goal three. Then I come here and I have this quarterly calendar, which I really love. It's nice big, has lots of space, and I, I X out any days or weeks that I know I'm not going to be working on goals or projects. So I X those out, and then I go through and I schedule in all of my goals, like for goal one was physical, um, physical health, so I know I want to do cardio, I know I need to do strength training, so I mark out the days that I'm going to do those. Then I want to do a weekly planning and review, I do those on Sunday, so I mark those in then I try to fit in all my projects and hobbies. Um, so for example, October daily, I know I wanted to work on it from all of October and the first couple of weeks in November, because I know that I'm not gonna be exactly on track with it. I'm gonna have some times when I'm a little bit behind, especially because I have a couple of weekends where I'm not gonna be working on it. And I mostly have to work on my projects on the weekends because I have a very demanding job, day job that I work every day. So it's tough to do things during the week. So October daily here, I planned out the weekends that I was going to be working on it and plugged those in. And like December daily prep, I just put overall, I'm going to be working on it in December. So whenever, or, or I'm sorry, in November. So whenever I have a chance to work on it in November, I will. It's not something that I need to schedule out specifically. And then December daily documenting, I'm going to do that every day in December. This quarter is kind of light because as I get into holiday planning and the holidays and work, it's going to be completely crazy. So I tried to keep it pretty light. I do have things, other things I want to get done that I just need to do in a specific week, but not a specific day. So I will write those out on a sticky and put them in here. So I have Christmas planning. I wanted to get done. This week, this is week 40, this is week one of the quarter. So that's what those numbers are. So Christmas planning, and then I have my quarterly three planner archives. So I'm planning on doing that this week. 
I have my pocket letter that I do, um, happy mail for my sister. So I want to get that out in this week, in week three. Um, my husband's birthday, I have to get that. So I just try and like put everything in and get it all scheduled out. And that helps me to see if I have too many projects that I know I'm not going to be able to get done, then I just take them off the list. So that's this I find very helpful. Then I also did a weekly schedule, which helps as well to figure out when you're going to actually be able to work on projects. So, you know, I work full time. I, um, I really only have time to work on projects on the weekends. So that's, that was really helpful as well to make sure I'm not over scheduling myself. And then I took that and I put that and my Q4 plan into my planner. I made it small enough to fit in here on the front. I put the plan and then on the back, I have my ideal schedule. It's really small, but I'm able to read it. Okay, so after I have my goals set, I have everything planned out, then I go through and I write out all my sticky notes for each week. So every single week I have what I need to get done that week for each of the goals. And I have each goal in a different color sticky note. And then this is what goes on my Kanban board. And I'll show that in just a minute. So I have them all written out through the end of the quarter. And lastly on here, I go through and I put down my milestones for each goal. So for goal one, by the end of October, I should have 20 cardio sessions done, five strength trainings done, and I will have four weeks where I have logged my calories. For goal two, I've done four weekly reviews and I've scheduled out my morning or I've completed my morning routine four times. And then for Q3 for projects, I should have Christmas planning done. I should have my 2021 planner set up. I should have October daily days one through 24 done, my October pocket letter done, my husband's birthday present bought and Q3 archive. So then I can keep track of how well I'm doing for towards my goals for the quarter. And I assess this each week in my weekly review, which is actually one of my goals. So I make sure I am looking at where I'm at and what I need to get done if I'm behind or whatever, if I need to adjust something. Um, let's see, I do want to share in here, um, where did I put it? So for my goal two, let me go back to that here. My goal two was to create habits and routines to look and feel my best. And I wanted to have an outcome goal of self-care score average of five, seven, or 10. So how I'm planning on tracking that is I created this. This is a prototype and I need to actually finish filling it out. But I have each week here and then I have what, what all the things I need to do in my morning routine here. And then I'll highlight the days that I need to do them and just check them off. So each one that is a colored box will have a score of one. So um, overall my weekly score for would be, a, I guess a daily, it's a daily score of five, seven or 10. So I'll track that in my weekly review and that will go in my planner. So once I put my stickies on my Kanban board, I then, during my weekly planning, I actually will come in here and add it into my week. And I usually add it into this middle section of my planner. So I add anything that's on my board that I need to get done for that week. So that's how I get it scheduled into my planner. So I think here you can see that when we were out of town, so I didn't have anything that week. So that's how I do that. So let me move the camera. Let me add all my sticky notes onto my board and I'll show you how my board works. Okay, so all of my sticky notes have been moved out of the HB90 planner onto my Kanban board. And 
I can't really get any closer than this to go through overall how the board works. So hopefully this will be okay. And I'm sorry because I'm holding my camera, so it might be a little bit shaky. But so you can see I have three goals. And so I have three columns listed out. And then for each goal, I have three rows. One, two, three. So the top row is where my to-do is. So all of my sticky notes start out on the top row. Those are things that I need to get done. Then on the middle row is things that I'm actively working on right now. So you can see I have some things in the second goal and the third goal for this week that I'm working on. And then the bottom row is once I'm done. So at the end of the quarter, you can see all of the things that you have accomplished and then all of the things at the top that didn't get done that were supposed to get done. So it's very motivating to come in and move down your sticky notes each week. So I usually come in on Monday mornings and I'll pull down the sticky notes that I need to work on for that week and move the ones that I have done down to the bottom. So let me go in closer and show you an example of what I write on the notes. So for example, I usually write down what the task is, what week I'm gonna get it done, and the date. So it's easy to find them on the board. Um, I do break down projects into small little bite-sized tasks. So for my pocket letter, for example, for November, I have front pockets as a task, I have back pockets as a task, I have writing the letter and getting it ready to mail and then mailing it. So I have all of those and what week I'm gonna do each one. It just helps to break down the tasks. Also, I have, I think, yeah, right here, Christmas planning. So once I am done with my Christmas planning, I'm gonna have additional sticky notes that will go into this goal three. Hope that makes sense. Um, for tasks like, let's see, um, like my morning routine up here. Uh, there we go. So for tasks like my morning routine, where it's something I have to do every day, I don't want to write out a sticky note for every single day. So I just write out one for the week. And if I get it done for the majority of the days in the week, then I'll move it down. And if not, then I leave it up at the top. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. I do wanna mention this is based on the 12 week, 12 week year. There is a system out there. So if you haven't read that book, I would highly recommend that. And then also Sarah Cannon does the HB90 method and she has lots of videos on it on her channel. And that follows along with the 12 week year. So it's a good way to take what you learn in 12 week year and apply it in real life. So uh, I think that's all. If you have any questions, like I said, just let me know and thanks for watching. Bye.